Hey everyone, Chris Madsen here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a design table to create multiple configurations of a part that you've created in the CAD system. Let's do it. The purpose of a design table is to allow us to create multiple configurations of a particular part. And so we have to have a part that we start with. Now we may have designed that part specifically to be used in a design table, or it may be a part that we have uh, created in another setting and uh, we want to make variations of it. And so we can use a design table for that. So here you can see I have my CAD model of this shaft. This is the same shaft that's used in the guidebook example in figure 5.1. I'm going to show you how to do this one. Um, once we have this generic part, this default part, we're simply going to insert a table, design table, and we are going to look at the things on the left here. These are the options that we have. We're going to auto create. We are going to allow model edits to update the design table. And then we are going to look for new parameters and look for new configurations. Um, we don't want to warn when updating a design table, but we do want to unclick this box that says enable cell dropdown. Uh, if we have the cell dropdown enabled, it gives us a little bit less control um, as a designer over what's going to happen. And we can uh, be a little faster in our coding, so to speak, uh, if we unclick this box. So we're going to create this design table. Now what's happening is that SolidWorks is opening up Excel within SolidWorks. It's accessing all of the parameters that were used to create the model. And they're listed right here. Um, and we get to decide which ones we want to bring in. I'm going to bring in all of these into the design table and is now created the design table. Just kind of going to look at it, see what we got going on here. So we have a couple of things uh, that we want to pay attention to. Number one, the configurations are represented in the rows. So we have one configuration in here. It's called the default configuration. And then here we have the parameter names uh, right up here. And then right underneath those, we have the values for the parameters. And we can remember now um, that uh, when, well, I created this model. When I created this model, I, I chose these parameter values when I was making it. So let's find out how we can make other configurations. To make other configurations, all we have to do, shaft one, we can create a new shaft here. And um, in fact, in the example in the book, there's five shafts. So we can just make five shafts. And then um, we can type in the values that uh, we can see in figure 5.1 in the book. So the shaft one has a, a, a diameter of 10 for the shaft. Shaft two has a diameter of 10. Shaft three has a diameter of five. Shaft four has a diameter of 10. And we can go in and uh, create all of the different configurations by simply specifying their parameter values here in the table. And so I'm going to do that. Um, I'm just going to type all those in here. All right, once I've typed all these values in here, I can uh, click off of the model and or click off of the Excel uh, spreadsheet. And uh, it will tell me that I have five new configurations that are available. And I can bring in these configurations. These configurations are now accessible in the Configurations Manager, which is right near the Design Tree and the Properties Manager. And I can see that these um, uh, different configurations are shown over here. They're shown as gray because they haven't been opened yet and verified as operational within SolidWorks. But if I click on one of them, I can see this is uh, Shaft 1. And I can see this is shaft two. I guess that's shaft two. This is shaft three. This is shaft four. OK. Uh, now, comparing this to what's going on in the book, I can see that the depth of the groove looks wrong. So I can go in and edit this stuff by uh, opening up tables, right clicking on the design table, editing the table. And let's find out where I went wrong. OK, I can see where I went wrong. By the way, uh, when we open up 
uh, the design table to edit it. It looks for new parameters and it's asking me if I want to bring in color, description, part number. I'm not going to bring in any of those because those don't matter right now for this example. But I can see uh, that the depth of the groove, which is this one, is um, one order of magnitude too small. So this actually should have been 0.8, not 0.08. And uh, I can make that change in all of them. Click out here. And what will we see? We see an update in shaft four. And shaft five now has the right thing. And shaft three has the right thing. Actually, shaft three is not even supposed to have a groove. So we're going to have to go solve that part now. Okay. And also, we don't have the materials in here. So let's see if we can uh, figure that out. Okay, we're going to go in here and edit this table. So we go in here and edit this table. We're going to find that there is a very important function in SolidWorks uh, design tables that's called dollar sign state at um, well what happens here is we get to turn on and off features we get to suppress them or unsuppress them and we do that with this function called dollar sign state at and then the at is the function that we are um, that we are interested in and the one that we want to turn off here is that is the cut dash revolve one cut dash revolve one now i have written this code up here and uh, because i wrote that code i can click outside of the excel sheet and it will go into my configurations and know that i now care about that parameter in the table so when i edit the design table again it should populate those uh, values so let's see what happens great look it gave me a u on all of these, which means the revolve is unsuppressed on all of those configurations. And in fact, that is true. It is un un uh, unsuppressed on all the configurations. So I can switch this simply to an S to be suppressed, which I need to do for shaft one, and I need to do for shaft three. I can see that in the um, guidebook. If I click outside here now, shaft one should have no groove, and it does not. Shaft 2 should have a groove, and it does. Shaft 3 should have no groove, and it does not. Shaft 4 should have a groove, and it does. And Shaft 5 should have a groove, and it does. So we have now controlled the presence or non-presence of features using the suppress uh, function in the design table, which we accessed by doing dollar sign state at then the name of the feature. All right, so what we have not done yet is we have not controlled the material from the design table. So we're going to try that right now. And we're going to go in here into design table and edit the design table. And we are going to uh, type another code over here. And the code that we're going to type is dollar sign library colon material. I think I spelled that right. Material at and then what I do right here is I need to have the name of the file that I'm working on now after this, um, after this. Uh, and the name of the file is this one right here, D table EX. So D table EX. All right. Now let's click outside of this and see if it will auto populate this. Okay which we we experienced with the state variable. Let's see if this happens now with the material. Okay, so we just simply get back into our design table and we edit it. And when we do edit it, let's see what happens. I got my devices here giving me a little bit of trouble. Okay, so that one did not auto populate. So when we cannot auto populate, when it does not auto populate, what are we going to do? We are going to manually enter in the value. We can see in um, uh, my devices are going crazy. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Whatever. Um, we can see um, we can see in the 5.1 figure uh, what we have to type in there. So let's try that. SolidWorks space materials colon PBT space general purpose. Okay, now we're going to click outside of this. We're going to see if it tells us something. 
great, look, we have a little error up here at the top. This error is great for us to have because it helps us to know what's going on in the system. And it's telling us that it didn't like uh, some of the things that we did. So it either didn't like this material, PBT general purpose, Let's see. I'm just making sure I have um, spelt this right. Okay. Um, that's not an uncommon error for us to have. And when we have errors in our design table, it will say it up in that top corner. It's really important to read what's in that top corner. Okay, so we're going to see if this was case sensitive. Maybe it was case sensitive. What we're doing right now is we're starting to debug. SolidWorks. materials, colon, let's try um, a different material here, brass, and our default, our default one is turned to brass, okay, because that must have been what we told it to do in the design table, so we're going to edit the design table. Uh, maybe we had a case sensitive problem there, maybe we had a um, Maybe we had a, let's turn all of these into brass. And actually, let's turn one of them into, whoops. Let's turn one of them into um, PBT general purpose. Maybe I'd spelled that wrong. Who knows? Let's find out what happens with this. OK. Um, so uh, SolidWorks likes to give us these little errors. If we read them, we can see what they say. Uh, now it's saying that brass is not um, is not a valid um, material, which of course is kind of disappointing that it says that kind of thing. But we can work through this stuff. It's going to um, it's going to work for us here shortly. Clearly, it's running brass now. It has PBT general. Um, written out on all of these uh, ones that you can see here. And what's gone on is that actually in the the default part was PBT general. And so when these de uh, when these configurations were generated, it assumed the material uh, PBT general purpose. Uh, but what we can do now, we've gone back and forth a few times to try to get Excel and SolidWorks to talk to each other. What we're going to do is um, go in and switch these to the materials that they should be. In this case, we have AISI, AISI uh, 1020, 1020. Okay, and then we have that same material below it. I messed that up. There we go. And then we have a titanium. And so this one is titanium TI dash. 5 AL dash 2.5 SN. Okay, and then we're going to take that material and copy it down there. And we're going to jump out of this. So I will tell you while this is regenerating that um, dealing with materials is actually kind of tricky in the design table, but you can get it to work if you need to. And um, this is how you do it. You just kind of go back and forth and you debug it until it's working. Now it's telling me there's another little problem here and it's really important to recognize that it's saying that uh, whenever it encountered this problem, brass, uh, it exited the design table without completing the model. So that means it wouldn't have created anything else that we asked it to do. We just need to go in and, and see what's going on here. Okay. So um, what it's having trouble with is this first one. Okay, right here, and then we and then shaft number one should be brass. So let's switch it to that brass, and um, let's just switch this one to AISI ten twenty, AISI ten twenty, and I'm going to jump out of this and see what happens. Okay, so now our default one is. We can actually check over here in the design tree. It is PBT general purpose. 
Our second one is brass. It looks like it's brass, but we can check it out right here that it is brass. Uh, part of what was going on with our problem there is we were messing around with the default version, which is not really a good idea to do. Um, this one should be AISI 1020. Let's see. This is AIS, uh, the AISI 1020. <clears throat> and now what we're ready to do is go in here and edit this table and fix up the rest of the materials. Uh, in this case, I have um, AISI 1020 appearing in that configuration. And on this one, I have the titanium. 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 I spell titanium. Um, there we go. TI 5AL 2.5SN. Okay, so that's that. Now we click out here and um, it comes in without any errors, which is great. Down here, this should be titanium. So we come to the here and yes, this is titanium. Excellent. And then this one here should also be titanium. Yes, it's listed as titanium. Excellent. This one should be AISI 1020, uh, which it is. And then we already checked the other configurations. And now we can see from the design table, we have created these five additional configurations that go beyond the default. And that's how you create multiple configurations and debug a little bit in the process. The debugging is largely related to materials. And that's how you do it in SolidWorks. Thanks. See you in the next video.